People who are happy, 80% of the time. What's your secret? Knowing that happiness doesn't have to mean that I'm giddy with joy. Not being sad is happy too. This, going through rough times teaches you the value of just okay and appreciation for the simple things that make up a normal day. Admitting most things are out of my control and learning to accept what life brings and deal with it rather than let it bother me emotionally. I have this philosophy that everything works out in the end, and if things aren't working out then it's not the end. I let every small good thing outweigh the bad. I had a rotten day at work, that sucky but hey, my toast was perfectly toasted today and the supermarket was having a sale on tea so I got to try something new cheap. It's hard sometimes, but if you can train yourself to smile every time you see a nice flower or a cool bird etc it means little things makes you happy and it all adds up. I'm very happy. I'm not a bubbly personality. I don't smile all the time. I probably don't come across as a happy person but I love my life and wouldn't change it. My secret if you could call it that, is that I'm picky about who I keep in my life. I only have healthy, supportive relationships. My husband is amazing and we make the best team. Our daughter is an extremely happy kid. Our home is very peaceful and happy. If I had married some of my exes I know I'd be miserable right now. Choosing the right people to share your life with is so important. I'm just blown away by people not being in all of the world around them. I feel like I'll live in a constant state of amazement that I'm alive, much less in such relatively privileged circumstances. It's very hard for me to get stressed out about personal issues because how bad could it really be? The only thing that truly upsets me is death. Be it someone I know or something terrible happening somewhere in the world. Other than that, what's the big deal? This is in reference to people who are simply pessimistic. Not people who are legitimately depressed of course. A really old guy told me that pain in life is unavoidable. Suffering is a choice. With a few exceptions he was pretty spot on. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. Say you're running and you think, man, this hurts. I can't take it anymore. The hurt part is an unavoidable reality, but whether or not you can stand anymore is up to the runner himself. Hiroki Murakami. Being raised by two optimists. Not a freaking clue. I wish I did because I'd like everyone to be happy as much as I am. I've been feeling this lately. I wish that everyone would stop taking things quite so seriously and enjoy life a little. I feel as though I'm perpetually the one trying to pick people up emotionally, not that I mind. I like being supportive, but it makes me sad that they can't just be happy. Gratitude. Humor. Beer too but that's not really a factor. Okay beer. Seriously, if you can joke about all the fricked up crap that happens, as if it's all predictable because it pretty much all is, then life is a heck of a lot more fun. Wasn't it Charlie Chaplin who said, life is a tragedy in the close up but a comedy in the long shot. I used to listen to motivational tapes on the long drive to work for several years and the content is now embedded in my brain. Things will only hurt you as much as you let them hurt you. Basically just have an I ain't got time to bleed attitude about life. I grew up in Nigeria and saw families living on roadsides and huts and I realize a lot of people have it worse than I do and at the end of the day, I have a wonderful family, a pantry stocked with food, a roof over my head and a warm bed to sleep in. My problems are rather small compared to what many in the world have to deal with. If I've had a particularly bad string of luck, i.e. the printer spews ink on you, you lock yourself out of your house, etc. I laugh and realize how many stars must have had to align perfectly in order for everything to occur in the same day or week and count myself lucky. Self-compassion and forgiveness. Remembering everything is temporary, even our own lives so enjoy what you can and be content with what you have. Constant work on emotions. Stop trying to be happy. Stop trying to become anything other than what you are currently. Just live. Just exist. Just be. Whatever that means. Happiness is the absence of the striving for happiness. Zhuangzi. Happiness is a state of mind and an attitude and nothing that comes to you. I stand up every morning teasing my wife, making her laugh. I am looking forward to breakfast, meeting colleagues and interesting tasks at work. I always think about others, make compliments to strangers, tell everyone that I love how I feel. In my spare time, when I am alone, 
I think of things to do with my wife. For example, inviting friends, looking at Reddit to find awesome movies. We do crazy crap like running through our house, hiding or we go for long walks while talking all the time. In 6 months I am going to be a father and this is more than I could ever have asked for my life. I think it is important to live in the now and not make your happiness depending on things that might or might not happen in the future. Find out what makes you happy and do this more. Find out what makes you unhappy and do it less. Quit your job if you need to. After meeting with friends check yourself if you had a good time and if not, cut ties with those friends. Discover new things to do all the time. The secret to happiness is to know who you are. I keep in mind that everybody means well at some level. They may not be acting like it right now, or I may not understand their motive for what they are doing, but 99.9% .9 of people are trying to do what they think is best for everyone, and even if I think they're wrong, knowing that makes it much harder to get angry with anyone. I have a stable job, good health, enough money to pay my bills and then some, and a wife who I suspect may have a thing for me. Everything can be laughed at, even if something's really bad, laugh at how bad it is. Not giving a frick, which can reveal itself to be problematic at some point. I tried being miserable once, and it sucked. Seriously though, I've had some bad times and compared to that, there's always something to be happy about. It's sometimes a conscious choice. Clinical depression is real though, so this doesn't necessarily apply to folks with that. I just feel happy because I have all these things that used to be wrong about me, and now I've beaten them. Terrible allergies, feeling sick and bad all the time, I'm on meds for my constant infections, and the best part is pretty much getting over my depression and being able to wrestle my anxiety into submission. I only wish I could share my joy with the people I come into contact every day. Realizing that very few of the things we worry about actually matter in the long run. Also there's only so much you can do in any given situation. So by stressing about things that don't matter and can't be changed you are making a choice to be miserable. So make the opposite choice. If a problem comes up, first, before panicking and thinking oh crap think what can I do to get around this if there is nothing you can do. Think how can I mitigate its impact. Do what you can. But then when there's nothing more you can do uh, and just relax and let it flow over you. Take pleasure in the small things every day. You had a crap day and your boss yelled at you cause you fricked up. But this sofa sure is comfy. This cup of tea is perfect. And I've got fried chicken for tea. Could life get any better? Also from a physiological POV. Make sure to get enough sunlight, fresh air, eat your veg, walk places regularly, get a hobby, and talk to the people you love on a regular basis. At the end of the day we are animals, highly social ones at that, so we need certain things to keep happy just like you give a gerbil a wheel and a gnaw stick and a friend to play with. Serotonin and dopamine. Money. Don't stress the small crap and be thankful for each minute you have on this crazy rock. Low expectations. I've never been one of those people who expect great joy or deep meaning in life. You do your best and get on with it. I don't have a super exciting, glamorous career, an oceanfront mansion, or a chef preparing gourmet meals. I have a job, a roof over my head, enough to eat, and friends and family I love and who love me. And it's enough. And life is good. I started to better understand control my emotions. I forget the source. It was some self-helpish book, but I kind of remember a few examples and the whole idea really stuck with me. Say you're out to dinner and the waitress accidentally knocks your drink onto you. You're probably going to get mad. But why? I'm all wet now okay. But why does it have to make you mad? My shirt and pants are ruined and I'm cold I see. And that sucks. But why does it have to make you mad? So says something that upsets you. Guys cuts you off in traffic. Something just doesn't go your way, whatever, you're upset, but why does that thing have to upset you? Why can't you laugh at it instead, or go on with your day with the same attitude you had before? I can't explain it as well as the book did, and obviously if you have actual depression you aren't going to fix a chemical imbalance with a little introspective thinking, but it's done wonders for me and the friends I've talked about it with. It's a choice, really, not to be some sappy moron who quotes other people, but I literally live by this. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. 
Attitude, to me, is more important than facts. Dot. The only thing we can do is play on the one string we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. By Charles Swindle. My cat is just adorable. Hard to not be happy with that little smiling face. 1. Don't let stupid crap you can't really control get to you. 2. If you are in a situation that's bad for whatever reason, realize it will almost always get better. 3. Most people are really good. If they aren't it's just because they are oblivious. 4. If you have people in your life that are causing lots of drama, cut them out of your life. Some people just live to stir up crap. 5. Do nice things for people for no reason. Random acts of kindness is like planting seeds of happiness that will bear fruit when they you least expect it. 6. May not be true for everyone but I just assume I'm happy if I really don't have any reason to be down. My dad taught me two things that I will always remember. Well, really, raised us in a way that these values were embedded in us. One of them was never, ever look at someone else's plate. He constantly reminded us to focus on our own lives and not to compare ourselves to others, who may seem to have more or better things. It became a way of life, and I can honestly say that as a 30 year old female, I do not compare myself to other women, relationships, friends jobs, cars, homes, etc. It really helps you be happy with what you have, and be genuinely happy when your friends achieve or acquire something. The second was never to push yourself in where you are not wanted, meaning, don't run after anyone. If you feel you have overstayed your welcome, preserve your dignity and leave. In short, a lesson in self-esteem. Those two tie together, where you value yourself and don't compare yourself to others, definitely shaped my worldview and my happiness. I would say that I am happy whatever that means, over 80% of the time. Thanks dad. Recognize things are not in your control. Make peace with that fact. Learn to roll with it. Gratitude practice. It's a habit. Some combination of drugs and or self delusion. Ah, an honest answer. By telling yourself you can either be sad angry, 80% of the time or happy, 80% of the time, or that nothing really matters in the end. Surround yourself with what makes you happy, and eliminate those that don't. Believing that happiness is a choice, the day is going to go by no matter what, so I'd rather choose to do it happily because I have never once looked back and was proud of being angry upset sad. If you can do something about a situation, why worry? And if you can't do something about a situation, why worry? I am only awake 20% of the day. You have been visited by the ingenious Joe. Comment brain so you always see the glass half full. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.